Okay, hi everyone. Um, I just want to talk about our phones quickly. Can I just ask who of you here this evening uh, came to FinJS by using the Eventbrite application? Yeah. Okay, it's a fair number of people. Um, so when I got the email uh, inviting me to FinJS, uh, there was a link in it uh, that I could click to register. And when I clicked that link in my, um, uh, in my invitation, uh, it took me into the Eventbrite application immediately. And from there, I could register for the event. And I could also add a calendar entry to, um, to my phone's calendar. And today, uh, a notification popped up, Tim, um, that allowed me, uh, that, that reminded me of coming here. And uh, when I clicked on it, it took me to my calendar. And from there, I could, I could click on the location and it would take me into my Maps application and give my directions of how to get here. And it was all pretty seamless, and I, I didn't really even have to think about it, right? And, and some of this integratedness is, is coming to our PCs now, but our financial desktops doesn't really work like this yet. Um, like, can you imagine how this scenario would work uh, in an organization like a big bank today, for example. Uh, I can tell you, you would probably have to raise a request, right? You would have to go to a request system, you would have to wait a few days, and then you could perhaps register for the event. Um, there would be lots of disconnected applications written in different technologies at different times that don't know anything about each other. And um, there would be lots of copying and pasting of data. And I can almost guarantee you that at some point, you will have to go to a website that only works in Internet Explorer. Right. <laughs> I, think, um, I think everyone understands that. Um, yeah, so my name is Rico Eckstein, and, and I work for Adaptive, and we're a consultancy uh, who've been helping clients with, with their desktops uh, really since our inceptions to build ecosystems, to bring a bit of this experience we have on their phones um, uh, to, to financial desktops, um, really even since the day before web technologies became a big thing in the, in the financial industry. And, and the question is, how do we do that, right? It turns out we are not the only people struggling with that problem. Uh, there's this community that's arisen called the FTC3, which is really a community of like-minded organizations and, and, and individuals and vendors who are trying to come together to help define a shared language that can help applications interact on financial desktops. Um, now, the first thing people ask me about the FTC3 is what does it stand for? To which my response usually is, look, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a mouthful. I've put it up there in case you're interested, but I just call it the FTC3. Right. Uh, the important thing is it was started by our friends OpenFin in, in 2017 and then contributed to the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Um, now, what that, all that that means, it's completely developed in the open, out there on GitHub. Anybody can contribute. Uh, anybody can get involved. And the important thing I want to stress about FTC3 is it's not a framework or a library. It's a set of specifications. It's, it's a way to define a shared language so that applications can work together. And in March of this year, uh, FTC 3.1.0 was released. Uh, a lot of us worked very hard on the first set of specifications. And at ftc3.finos.org, you can go and find out more about them. We've worked hard to try and make it easy for people to understand and to get on board. So what are in those specifications? Well. Firstly, there's a standard for an app directory. And I think in this room, we've probably built quite a few app stores and app directories in our organ organizations between us, maybe sometimes more than one in the same organization. Right? So this is about trying to standardize that and only doing it once. Uh, then there's something called intent. And all this is is really a well-known set of verbs, uh, things like um, I want to view a chart, or I want to start a chat. Um, applications don't have to know about each other. They just know about these verbs and these capabilities that are available. And what goes hand in hand with that is the data that they act on, right? So if I want to view a chart, well, what is the instrument 
that I want to view a chart for? Uh, what is the, the, who is the contact that I want to start a chat with? And, um, and then some API operations to pull all of this together in a really simple way. Um, just a few operations, things like, uh, well, I've got a bond. What are the things that I can do to it on my desktop? The important thing about all of this is the applications don't know about each other. They're completely decoupled. Um, they work independently. They can be released independently. And you may ask me, uh, why does this matter? Um, I'm just going to try and get that toolbar out of the way. Uh, you know, and, and, and yes, it is about creating workflows, like, like Tim just mentioned, about making applications work together. Um, but it is about so, so much more than that. Uh, it is about reducing costs. Uh, you know, we've discovered that building big applications, uh, big monoliths don't work anymore, so we divide them up into smaller components. But that means we've got to schedule cross-team global releases um, that are really expensive, that brings all of these components together. Instead, if we decouple our applications, we can um, release them independently um, without shared schedules, and, and functionality can light up on people's desktop as additional pieces are dropped into place. It's about new revenue opportunities for organizations. Because these big bang global releases that, that spread across continents and, and, and schedules and timelines are not economically viable. And therefore, we get disparate business areas delivering applications in isolation. So decoupling applications, introducing a shared language, uh, allows teams to deliver together without significant overhead. And uh, it allows functionality to be implemented across teams that stretches across regions. Uh, maybe I can illustrate it this way. And uh, I've got an, an alert here that we've just heard about. Uh, let's imagine it's for the publication of a new ax. Uh, and clicking on that notification will take you straight into the chat application that the salesperson uses uh, to talk to the customer. It might be Bloomberg or Symfony or an in-house application. And from there, they can directly launch um, a pricing tile with, with streaming prices from where they can um, uh, offer a price to a customer. And the key thing about this is the teams that do this could sit in, in, in completely different places in the world. Uh, they could be releasing independently. They could have different business priorities. Um, decoupling our applications allows us to do that. And finally, uh, it introduces um, the opportunity for, for network effects and scale. Organizations, especially big organizations, have a huge investment in isolated pieces of functionality on their desktops. And, and this has limited scalability. It's hard to put this all together. Uh, but deploying our applications in this way truly unlocks the power of a desktop ecosystem. Um, you can get exponential value from adding another node to your network of applications out there already, um, out of the capabilities that are available. So I mean, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this idea. And, and I think it's, it's a very powerful idea. And I've worked with so many clients and end users. And there's that moment when their eyes light up and, and they realize what they can do by leveraging what they have already to deliver those new workflows. Uh, I've been personally involved in FTC3 to, to, to help deliver this. I've invested my own personal time to try and get the specifications up to scratch. And if you take nothing else away from today's talk, just remember the next time you want to build an app store or you want to make applications talk to each other um, or have shared data, there's already a community of people out there trying these things together. Just search for FTC3 in Google you know, and come and join us. Uh, and if you want to find out more about how you can leverage FTC3 in your organization, please come and talk to us at our adaptive booth. Um, we will be running workshops for organizations on, on FTC3 and, and how it can make a difference in your business. So yeah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>